Welcome to another session of Quarantine Conversations. Have a very, very special guest with me today, part of the brotherhood. This guy really needs no introduction. Uh, had a phenomenal sophomore season. A uh, whole bunch of accolades that we'll go over a little bit later. But uh, Duke's very own ACC Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year in ACC, first team, all ACC, all American, all that. Trey Jones, welcome to the Quarantine Conversations, man. What's up? Thank you for having me. Thank you. No, it's all good, bro. I appreciate you taking the time out to to come on here and, and talk talk to me for a little while. So, uh, first off, man, just just how how have you been? Right, I've been pretty good. Um, you know, just trying to work out now. Um, I mean, staying staying in my own spot, so I'm staying away from mom and grandma. Trying to um, still get in the gym though and work out um, in this time, trying to prepare for the draft. Man, so yeah, so how has that been, man? You spoke about you just spoke about your mom. We know your mom with you know dealing with with, with the cancer. Uh, your grandmother, who we consider to be, she's she's an elderly elderly individual. So how how has that been, man? Not really not being being home, but not being able to really embrace maybe like you would like you would like to or normally would embrace your you know embrace your mom and your grandma. Right, like you said, it's not really being home. Um, I mean, I don't get to spend nearly as much time around my family as I wish I would be able to and what I'm used to. But, um, I mean, it's just about being smart in these situations. Um, who knows how long this is going to be around and be like this. So, um, I mean, I, I'm hoping that with everyone being smart and staying away and trying to just stay in, um, it passes over quickly so then we can get back with our families. But um, I'm just trying to be smart with everything. Um, washing my hands all the time, doing the, doing the things they're telling us to, but I'm just trying to, um, trying to stay, stay strong, stay away from them right now until um, we learn more about what's going on. Right, right. And if you don't mind me asking, how, how, is, how is mom doing? How, how, is, how, is, how is she doing with, with everything she has going on? Right, she's doing really well. Um, she, she beat it all. Um, she got her poured out and everything, so she's completely over it. Um, just a year and a couple months after she was diagnosed. So it's crazy, but uh, she was fighting like crazy and she got through it all. So thank you. Man, yeah, that's blessings to that, man. That's that's great news. So, man, so it's been, like I said, this whole situation for everybody has been unprecedented. Uh, we've never dealt with anything like this, but just from a sports perspective, kind of like what's your routine been like since, since just say since the season ended, you have to make a decision about, you know, if you're going back to school, if you're interning in draft, what has right. your routine been like since you've been home? Right. So since coming home, um, I mean, once I decided that I was entering the draft, um, I actually went to, went to stay with my brother when he came home. Um, so we got to work out together and whatnot. He was still I'm preparing for their season to come back and I was preparing for the draft. So, Perfect setup. He has a little gym in his basement and a little workout area where he can lift and whatnot. So I um, was staying with him for a while, but then um, he was actually expecting his first um, child. So they're going to be in and out of the hospital. So um, now I'm in my own spot, but my oldest brother actually um, trains at, is, he's a trainer at a facility, a really nice facility. So um, for the past four weeks now, I've been um, going in there five thirty a.m. before everyone else um, is able to come in for the day. So I'm just trying to um, get in before um, other people are in there and um, just working out now, trying to get ready for the draft whenever that is. We still don't know, but I'm just trying to stay in shape and stay ready and uh, make improvements as as we're getting ready for the draft. So yeah, I mean for for anybody who don't know who Trey Jones is or the Jones family. His older brother, he's speaking of, well, one of his older brothers that he's speaking of is Tyus, who plays for the Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, he has a, a old, his eldest brother, uh, who he was speaking of, his, is his trainer, come from a basketball family. Uh, speak about that a little bit, man. Like this, I guess for you, it's kind of, it hasn't been your typical, uh, what you've seen Tyus go through as far as the pre-draft situation. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of still a good setup for you because you have, you have ties to lean on for information and, you know, kind of model, like how, 
how should I do this or how should I go about this? And then you have your your eldest brother who has a facility and is a trainer. So how has that, has that been very helpful for you? Right. It's been extremely helpful, obviously with um, having Tyus um, close by and whatnot, um, just being able to um, reach out to him or talk to him about the process or whatever he went through and what to expect. But um, I mean, at the same time, he doesn't really know what to expect right now. So um, what he went through is going to be completely different than what I'm about to go through. Um, so he can really only give me so much in that aspect. But um, my oldest brother um, also has helped me a lot. I mean, he watches a lot of film. Um, I mean, he does all that stuff. He's a trainer. So um, just being able to, to go in with him every day, um, I mean, there's, there's nothing like it. I'm, I'm extremely lucky on the position I'm in with both of them um, helping me right now. Yeah, man. That, I mean, like you said, uh, for both of you guys' situations, yourself and your brother, like them not knowing if – him not knowing if the season's going to be come back, you know, to finish up for, you know, in, at the NBA level. And then right. you yourself getting – trying to get prepared for the draft. But then also that stuff is not on the same timeline like it, you, like it traditionally is. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, just not knowing, you know, how that process is going to actually uh, – how it's going to actually end up, you know, whenever things get back on track, uh, who's to say it ever gets back to normal. But eventually things will get back on track in some some shape or form. Yeah. Uh, so, man, yeah, I wish you all the best with that, man. Uh, can you speak a little bit about what you're hearing about your draft status? Right. So I've heard um, – I've heard that they might do like a – East teams go to like a place in the Eastern or on the East and then the Western team, Western conference teams go to somewhere on the West and they play it out and then they might have us either wherever our agency sends us or wants us to go to, to train, have like people fly in from NBA teams to watch workouts or have a combine in the two main cities that um, they send the NBA teams to. So I mean, I've been hearing different things, but it's really all just rumors still. Nothing is, nothing is really happening still. I don't think. So they, so they're actually still preparing. They're, well, they're trying to figure out a way to actually have a combine type situation still. Yeah, I think they, they still are trying to figure it out. I think the NBA is big on that, so I think they're what? trying to figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I don't think it's if the NBA season doesn't come back, then there's no way. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's really no way that. Then that means the the combine, all that stuff is out the window, also. Right. Unless, um, you, can, it, unless you push it way back. Yeah, to yeah. Unless you unless you're saying like, okay, we we're gonna push this back until September. You know what I'm saying? Like till right. September or whatever the case may be, or whenever they feel like they can resume. The, well, you have to do it before the the next NBA season exactly. possibly starts. So, yeah, this is man, it is it's a lot of unknown uh, variables to to. You know, to everything that's going on, you know, not just what we're talking about, but just, you know, in everyday life, you know, right. we're figuring out new information and new stuff about this virus just about every other day. Okay. Uh, but what to you specifically, uh, what have you heard about about your status in the draft? Like, uh, you know, how, how high have you heard? What's what's the what's the you know, base, what's the the bottom the bottom number that you that you've been hearing? Right. So I've heard. Um, all sorts of places. I've heard first round. I've heard second rounds. Um, that was that was my feedback that I heard. But I mean, for me, I really just want a place that um, believes in me and knows what I'm capable of and knows what I can bring to the to the team. So um, I mean, I think it's still going slow just because the season wasn't finished or they're still playing the second half of the season. So. Um, teams don't really know where they would be finishing. So it's hard to tell like where they would be drafting at, what spots they would be in. So I'm still not hearing a whole lot, but um, for the most part, I've heard um, anywhere from the middle of the first round to somewhere in the second round as well. Your ideal, do you have an ideal situation? Like, man, like that team could use me all. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 feel, I feel like I feel good on, in that situation. <laughs> nah. Uh, I've, I've thought of different things, but nothing that's like I wish would happen. I mean, no city, no, no, no city you like, man, I, I sure hope I get here. No city <laughs> you trying to get to? Uh, Memphis, obviously, with my brother and the other Dukies would be crazy. Okay. 
Okay. Um, yeah, no, nothing crazy, no. <laughs> but that, okay. So, yeah, the Memphis would just be all right, man. Just, man, that'd be, you know, of course, that'd be dope. You know, right. You know, getting to play at the highest level in the NBA, which, you know, with your brother. Right. But from an actual, from an actual, basketball business standpoint, it wasn't, it wouldn't be the best. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't right. be the best because now, okay, you're competing with your brother for playing time and also right. the depth chart with John Morant, your brother, mm -hmm. uh, I think, who did that? I think Milton. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. so much uh, that you'll be up against. Not saying that you couldn't find your way into that rotation, but, you know, you want right. to, you want to, you want to get drafted first and foremost and you want to go as high as you can, but also you want to go somewhere where you have a chance to, potentially exactly. play right away, whether you're starting right. or not, but being a rotation right away. So yeah. Uh man. So yeah. But uh man, so let's just let's recap go recap this this college career that you had. So you come in two years ago as a freshman, one of the best freshman classes in in, in definitely in Duke history, but possibly possibly in, in in college basketball history. Uh you guys have a hell of a team, make a great run. Talk a little bit of just talk a little bit about that, man. About playing with playing with Zion, RJ, and Cam, and in your first year at Duke under Coach K in that whole situation. Right. Um, yeah, that first year was crazy. Uh, I mean, just from day one, I'm um, coming in with with all that hype um, surrounding the class and um, some so many high expectations. But I mean, it even starts with. I think we had we had the Canada trip to start off with in August. Um, we went up to Canada, played three exhibition games where uh, me and Cam weren't healthy enough to play yet. But I mean, just being up in Canada where RJ was from and um, the hype around him coming out of high school and then the hype around Zion as well. Um, I mean, that's where it really started. Um, and we had ESPN following us around doing the all access on us. So we always had cameras around. Um, I mean, it was, it was just crazy from, from the start. And then it just picked up from there. Uh, first game when we played Kentucky, um, I mean, we, we killed them and <laughs> I mean, slaughtered, right. slaughtered the boys. And then after that, it was really like the whole nation was just going crazy about, um, everything that was going on. So it was just, it was a crazy year as far as the hype and the media and everything, and the attention, all that. It was, it was crazy as far as all that goes. It was, at times it was hard to focus because you were hearing all of that, no matter where you went. Um, you could turn on a basketball game, you're hearing it. Um, you'd go out to eat somewhere, you're hearing it. it no matter what, you're just hearing it. So, um, I mean, coach did a great job in keep, keeping us focused and keeping our heads in the right spaces. But, I mean, it was just crazy. It's something you would never really think of um, for a college basketball team, really. I got a question, man, because times have definitely changed since since I was in school and coaches changed for the better. You know, coaches changed for the better, just adjusting to the, you know, like to the student athletes now and what's mm -hmm. going on and the, and the expectations that you guys have about going to Duke, right? Uh, how How is he with all the social media stuff? Because, you know, after the games, you guys are doing the IGTV interview and you know what I'm saying? Like that would never have been acceptable you know, mm -hmm. and granted, like I said, we didn't have these platforms, right. too, but like stuff like that, like the all access stuff, coach was very, very like that stuff was very limited when I was in school, man. Uh, you know, having just different media outlets and, you know, reporters having access like that. But for you guys, it's like normal and it's and, and it's expected based on, you know, the, the type of players that come in each year. Uh, how was Coach K with that stuff? Right. He was he was really good with it. Um, I mean, he taught us all a lot about it. Um, he would help us. Um, he would help tell us what type of things to say or um, what we probably shouldn't put out there or um, what we should put out there. It was just um, – he was really good with it. Obviously, it would be times where he would joke around with it, how maybe he doesn't like it as much or just like you said, the stuff he used to not do and now he's um, coming around on it. But I think he realizes that a lot of things change over time and um, with how things are now, social media is a big thing and there's a lot of different platforms. And um, he had the biggest high school basketball player I ever talked about 
um, and everyone wanted to see what was going on. So I think he just accepted it, and um, I think it helped Duke and helped Zion um, in, in both in both areas. No, for sure. I mean, for, I mean, what Zion did, the expectations and the the hype, all that, all that surrounding him and RJ. Uh, right. both, I mean, uh, both, but RJ, you know, RJ came in as the number one player, you know, in, in your class. Right. So, but the stuff that Zion was doing, man, just the way that you guys played and he played individually was, uh, we had never, like nobody had ever seen anything like that right. <laughs> from a college, like from a college athlete. Right. Like, it never, yeah, we've never seen it, man. So of, of course, rightfully so, you guys deserved and he deserved the attention that you guys was getting. Uh, and like I said, the class y'all had yourself, Cam, I mean, you had, what? If, if Roger was one, Zion was two, Cam was top five, you know, in your class and you were, you were yeah, you in the top three. 10, top 15, yeah. like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's the circus was expected, man. So right. you guys probably need a little mini docu-series <laughs> we need a mini docu series in that season right there, man. Just to right. just to see what really was going on it on a day to day right basis. Way, That's the only thing it did not end the right way. And yeah, and, and you know, and it was tough, and that was tough, man. But like you said, it's uh, you're a player, and, and I think you understand it now that you you finish your sophomore year. Like nothing's promised. Exactly. Like, you know, nothing's promised. No matter how good your team is, no matter how mm -hmm. confident you feel about you know, yourself or your team's, you know, ability, like, that's why it's March Madness. Right. On any given day, you anyone. know, anyone, can, anyone, anyone can go home, man. It right. can be anybody's day. So that's what makes that part of the year so spectacular for the basketball world. Uh, but like you said, just to great segue into what I want to ask you about next, it didn't end the way that you, that you hope and you specifically because you had a brother that you was able to watch win a national championship as a freshman, mm -hmm. right? You watching him and growing up, having your dreams and aspirations, you go to Duke, you're like, man, I, I'm hoping I'm able to experience similar success, if not right. the same or better. And y'all had a great run that first year, last year. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't end the way that, that you hoped. It was a talk about possibly four guys from Duke, your four freshmen being able to leave. What what made you? Uh, what was the ultimate decision for you to be like? You know what? Nah, I, I'm either I don't like the way it ended, or I don't. I think I I think I need to get better, or I'm not ready. What made you? What what was what was your final say about coming back to school for your sophomore season? Right, my final say for sure was just wanting to to win a national championship. I mean, growing up as a kid, Duke was my favorite school. Um, Always watch Duke, always pull for them in, in March Madness. And um, now it's my turn to try to win the national championship there. So I felt like I wasn't – I was ready, but I feel like I, I just wanted to accomplish more at Duke. And so, um, I mean, I needed to get healthy. I had to get some surgeries in the off season and, and get healthy as well. And so I just thought that with getting surgery and – wanting to win a national championship and also just um, being at my dream school. There's no reason to leave after that first year. Uh, I mean, so I felt like I could get a lot better, get healthier, and then uh, go for a run in, in year two, not knowing that um, it would end just with no champion at all. <laughs> so, but no, nah, I think just getting healthy and um, improving my game and then just trying to give us um, the best chance we we could have at winning the national championship were, were the things that really pushed me coming back. Well, I mean, obviously it turned out to be a great, a great decision for you. And I, and I, and I thought you had a chance to leave after your first year, just based on, you know, your numbers wasn't great based on the team that you had, right. But, you know, you had three top, right. three top 10 players get drafted that year. And, uh, you know, you was more of a distributor, uh, you know, your, your scoring didn't, wasn't necessarily needed. This year you come back, right. you almost double your scoring. You know, your assists are right around what they were as your freshman year. You know, you take care of the ball. You know, your assist turnover ratio was great again. Defense was, if not better, you know what I'm saying, not better than the first year, just about the same. So, <clears throat> I mean, this year you really stepped it up, man, and, and you played well. Uh, like I say, all the honors that you was able to receive, ACC Player of the Year, ACC Defensive Player of the Year, like you do it on both ends. Uh, you 
finalist for all the, you know, some all American awards, John Wooden award, all the stuff that, that you was able to achieve this year. Uh, talk about your preparation for, for, for this sophomore year. And, and, and like you said, you, you said a little bit about your motivation. You, you want to win the national championship, uh, yeah. but also, I mean, what else was, what else, what, were you were you really trying to prove some of the doubters wrong about what they what they thought about you after your first season? Right, for sure. Um, I mean, with like you said, with the team that we had, I didn't. Uh, my scoring wasn't needed as much uh, on offense, um, and I knew how I could impact the team the most was on the defensive end. And so, really took pride in that the first year. And then, with coming back, um, coach told me that I'd have a lot more um, responsibility on the offensive end. Um, that I'd have to do a lot more for this team that we had rather than um, the team that we had in the first year. So I knew um, I'd have I'd be expected to do a lot more from from the team. But uh, I mean, from the outside looking in, I think that um, with coming back, there's a lot of people talking about um, my one of my weaknesses was shooting, and so that was something I really worked on. It was um, the three point line getting moved back, and I didn't shoot it real well um, in the first season. So I knew that. Um, getting my shot better and just having the confidence to shoot it um, was was something that I, I really worked on. But I'm just trying to prove that um, I, I should be in the talks for the best point guard in the nation. I really felt like it was something that motivated me the most. Um, I feel like just with how the season ended um, and making the decision to come back, um, felt like I was able to prove that I am in those talks and. Um, it was something that motivated me every day. It was something that I talked about with Shire all the time about, um, I mean, throughout the entire season. It was just something that always motivated me, and I felt like, um, yeah, that I was able to prove that. Well, man, not even being biased, but just watching the landscape of college basketball this year, uh, I definitely believe you're you're the best point guard in, in college basketball, for sure. If, to me, you had you and and, and, I, and like I said, not being biased. I you and I think it's up to between you and uh, the kid from Kansas, uh, mm -hmm. Dotson, uh, for sure. Just based on the seasons that both of you guys had, but you know, I'm a, I'm a roll with you. You know, uh, I'm rolling with I'm rolling with the I'm rolling with the boys in blue. But uh, but yeah, man. You like I said, just talking about that. Like you feeling that way? Do you think it's you think it's 30, 29 guys? Or let's just say, you think it's 15 guys that's that that much better than you in this year's draft? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to put myself before anyone. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, I feel like what I can bring to a team and um, like I know what I can do. So, um, I, I feel like I should be up there. But I just need a team who, who believes in me and knows what, what I'm capable of to bring to them. All right, so besides all the accolades, individual accolades that you received this year, you're probably going to be known for – you're going to be immortalized for, for, your, for your, your Duke Carolina performance. <laughs> Nobody's going to even remember that you was ACC player of the year. And not, like, they're going to talk about Trey Jones and the Carolina game and the way you performed and the shots you made. Just – can you reminisce a little bit about that, man? Like, what what was going on in in, in your mind? You know, prior to prior to the shot and like just afterwards, like, how did you feel? Yeah. So in the moment, I mean, it was just. I remember it might might be my last time in the in the Dean Dome. Um, then when it went in there the first year, so um, really needed to get a win there before I left. And I remember um, four minutes left, we were down still. And um, the group that we had out there, we kept this meeting. We had good talks. No one's head was down yet or anything, even though we were down double digits. And it was just one of those things where it's like, we're not losing. Like, we're, we're not, we're, like, we're leaving with a win. And so came back and then uh, at the free throw line right there, it was just something that me and Shire had talked about, kind of worked on. You can, can only work on it so much trying to miss a free throw off a certain spot. But, um, I mean, it was just standing and looked over at coach with four seconds left. And I was thinking um, I could hit both free throws. We can try to force a turnover on the inbounds pass and then get the ball back. 
or like if we get a quick foul, there's three seconds to get up the court still. Like we can get up the court and get a shot off. When I looked over, he was telling me to miss it. So I'm like, like I, I'm gonna go with what he said. I'm gonna miss it. <laughs> so I just took a step over. But that's the thing, though. In those type of situations, you're gonna try to miss it. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes that situation is totally like it totally like that. It just happened to perfectly work out. But a lot of times you try to miss it and you end up making it. Or you try to miss it and you miss it so bad that you know what I'm saying? You don't even have a <laughs> shot to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it a, yeah, it was the slid over and um I realized on film when I when I hit it off the rim, like it's almost like I knew where it was gonna come off. Like I immediately went to the spot where like really I didn't think I didn't know where it was gonna go, but I don't know, it was just I feel like it was just God coming down helping us. <laughs> So after you missed the free throw, because take because this in those type of situations, it you really have to be taught how to handle that, right? Mm-hmm. In your mind, did the did the get the game slow down once you once you hit it up and once you once you like okay, like I'm about to get this ball back and I'm about you know what I'm saying I got did the game in your mind did the game so that did, did you understand like okay I have time to do what you need to do but still be able to get the shot off or was it like and you, you know what I'm saying? You just was straight off adrenaline and reaction. Or like, when you got it, like, you knew, like, okay, I got three sets. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I knew I had a little time. Um, when I took my first dribble, I could see the time. But then I got it, like, hit away from me. So when I bent down to pick it back up, I didn't know how much time it was. I didn't know if I had enough time to take a couple dribbles. or So I just took one more and just pulled up. I knew the buzzer would be going off soon. So I just tried to get it off. It was just cash. Cash, <laughs> cash. Yeah, I went, uh, bro. I think it's on my end. I went crazy. With it. Crazy. But it, but it wasn't even the end of the game. It was I just, know, but I was bro. like, you know, like you said, we we was down. You guys fought, and then I'm like, once you hit the shot, I was like, we not, we definitely not losing in overtime. Lose, like, not losing in overtime. But man, yeah, that was one. Man, that's probably the best Carolina game, Duke Carolina game I've seen. Uh, better than some of the games that I would participate in with the teams I was on. But I think that's the number one Carol- Duke Carolina game ever. And t- for a lot of people who don't understand, like, they how big that rivalry is. Carolina was terrible this year. And that's not – you know, that's not to – we're not – I'm not trying to dog them. Just, that's just what they were this year. You know, they had some complica- – you know, they had injuries and stuff that kept them from being a better team that they could be. But they was terrible this year. But for that, for that game to come down like that, like, that just lets you know how much of that – like the rivalry, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the rankings. It doesn't matter how good. The, like that, that game is gonna be tooth and nail just about every time uh, yeah. both teams meet up. Every time, it's crazy. But so, man, so so let's talk a little bit about you know the 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 thrill of that, right? The thrill of that. You probably play what one or two more games after that before the regular season ends. Yeah, a couple more. Okay, the thrill of that, and now you guys have kind of, in my eyes, on the outside looking in, something changed. You guys would kind of figured out the rotation and who was going to really be able to contribute going forward. Right. And I speak of J-Rob. J-Rob had got inserted to the starting lineup like the last two or three games of the regular yep. season and yep. was balling. Mm-hmm. He was balling. You got this momentum going. You guys are playing well. You're getting ready to go into the ACC tournament, which – People who don't know, it's like another season for us, a mini season that we treat like a mini season, trying to win a pursue a championship. And you guys get the news that how how was that? How 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 did you guys find out about that? And yeah, you know, so I mean, we felt we felt confident going to the ACC tournament. It was we had J. Rob playing now, um, and we felt like that was a missing piece. Um, we felt like what he was bringing to us um, at the time was what we had been missing for that stretch that we were struggling in. Um, I mean, he was doing everything that we needed. He was talking the most, um, defending the hoop, hitting shots, getting good ball reversal. He was doing everything that we needed him to do. And it was, it was completing our team and we were playing some of our best basketball then. And so, um, I mean, we go into the ACC tournament, uh, we're playing, state first we had split with them um so we felt like we're going to be able to beat them 
um, and move on to play was Florida State, I think. Ooh. So we, we were feeling like if we were able to win three in a row here, we would get a one or two seed, probably a two seed. Um, Honestly, we, I was thinking if you guys was able to win an ACC tournament, you had a real good chance of getting back to that one seed. But right. depending on what happened with some of the, you know, the All other, the other teams, yeah, right. we didn't know. So, yeah, we th- we felt really good going to the ACC tournament. It felt like we'd be able to get a good draw for the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, we're all on a high going to the ACC, ACC tournament, getting ready. And um, the night before uh, my first game is when the NBA stuff happened. And the game got postponed, and they ended up postponing the, the season. And so, and the next morning we wake up, and there's all this stuff about – um, I mean, team or conferences canceling. Our conference had went to no fans, and so it was like, it, are they going to cancel or is it not canceled? NCA wasn't really saying much. Like we heard that there was going to be a meeting, but no one heard like what happened from the meeting. So it was just like the morning was so weird. No one, everyone was just like eyes were glued on the TV, just trying to figure out like because stuff was happening so quick. It was every hour something was happening in the sports world so I mean stuff was just happening so quick and then I mean like by noon or one that day everything was just done and so we went from 12 hours before that we were preparing to play our our or we were preparing to start our postseason run and 12 hours later it's all over and it was just it just happened so quick it didn't even seem real yeah man that's got to that's got I, I can't even imagine the feelings I would have if I was a college athlete or if I was just a student or you know a person in a position right now or this time period where I was getting ready to complete something, whether it be a college basketball season, uh graduation, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people missing out on a lot of memories and milestones that they had planned right. to achieve and, and you know and, 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 and finish this year. That, that's tough, man. That's that's a tough that's a tough pill to swallow, especially considering, you know, like you said, you you came back to school for this. All right, right man. This I'm, I'm coming back to school to try to win a national championship more than anything. But you know, to prove that I I'm a better player than you know what you got in. But to try to 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 get back to this moment to where I think I can lead my team, you know, to a final four and possibly win a national play for a national championship. Right. And you know, you know how the postseason is compared to the regular season, season even. Like, those games are the most fun games of the year. Like, um, everyone's playing as hard as they can. It's winter, go home. Crowd's going crazy. I mean, it's, it's the best games to be a part of. And that's like, that's why you go to, that's why you go to Duke. Exactly. Right and that's what, exactly. That's what I try to tell people all the time. Like, that's what you go to Duke for. You go, you, I went to Duke, just like I went to Duke to, to to play for one of the best programs, but also to play for a national championship every year. Right. And for me, unfortunately, I only got a chance to do that one one out of, one out of my four years. Like I only get gone to the final four one time. So I just like what I was trying to tell you earlier, like it's not guaranteed, but that's the thrill of that's the thrill of everything. Like, all right, man. I we got a chance every year, but you know, it's gonna be tough. But this is this is why I'm here. This is what right. I come here for. Yeah, and all the things you go through with the team throughout the year, it's the uh, all the workouts, all the, the talks with, I mean, co- you're, you're playing for the best coach of all time. He's having you do things with the team to get closer, you are fighting and doing everything just to get closer. And then when it's time to, to really go to war at the end of the season, it's just taken from you. It's, it's the worst feeling ever. Well, man, that's, so this, let's talk a little bit about coaching, and, and this will be the last thing. So uh, what, what has been your biggest – what have you learned the most in your two years – uh, from coach, what would you say? Who the most? I think. I or the think most, like the most in, influential thing that, like, man, like something like that's really sticking with sticking with you. I think just um, how you can, or what I saw, learned from him just by seeing him every day is just how how hungry he was every single day. Like that's why he was so. That's why he is so successful. Like, he. No matter how much he wins, no matter who he beats, no matter if it's with some of the greatest players in the world with Team USA or with with a college team, it, it doesn't matter. He 
he stays just he gets more hungry after after achieving things it's it's crazy and he's just he's always finding new ways to to stay hungry too it's not he's not doing the same things over and over again because he knows that he would get tired from it so i mean he's finding finding things to motivate him and he's finding ways to just to just stay at it and continue to want to stay at the top and i think um just being around that it makes you want to do the same thing and what you're doing is it's hard not to not to want to be in the gym every day when your coach is not sleeping because he's watching film so much and is trying to help you prepare to to beat the team that that you're playing next so it's like i think the thing i learned the most is just being all in on on everything that you do basketball wise well if, if that's what you're doing like basketball wise um so not not taking any shortcuts not trying to get find an easy way out of any anything i'm just doing everything to the fullest and yeah dude is <laughs> dude is crazy when it comes man, to basketball. i tell people i try i tell people that actually i was having a conversation the other day man and they asked me a similar question about that and i said what you said but in just in a different just in a different way his coach preparation is impeccable it's crazy yeah like it like in you saying this now i've been out of school 15 years right right so 15 years ago his preparation was impeccable like that's why his prep you're going to be prepared to play every game under coach k and his staff mm -hmm. you can never say like man like we didn't go over this or we didn't know about this like nah like no, we did. <laughs> he gonna be ready and he gonna have the squad ready every yeah. game now whether you go out there and play well or execute that's you know what i'm saying that, that's on that us. yeah that's on you yeah, <laughs> but you're gonna be prepared to play and he's gonna be ready for for every game uh because like you said like his his preparation man it it it, it ramps up every day and every year he's 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 making sure he's he's on top of his stuff right i think just he notices that the more he achieves the more people want to see him fail it's one of those things it's, Everyone loves you, but everyone wants to see you fail at the same time. So, that I think that really drives them too. Yeah, but at the same time, it's a little and, and it's a little different for you guys now. Right. You know, when I was the earlier Duke, like the '90s in, in my era, Duke's teams, we was hated, like literally, like by everybody. I can't even imagine. But yeah, by, I know, by, I by everybody. The Duke, the Duke that we have now, you guys are loved. Like you, it's a lot more love for Duke. Yeah, than it, to, than it used to be, man. Like it's cool right. to be a dookie now. Like it didn't used to be cool if you wasn't yeah. a dookie. It didn't right. like everybody want to be down with Duke now, but it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that <laughs> ten years ago, man. You love to just get to that point. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, I mean, I appreciate it, but you guys, I think Coach K, what he did with the USA basketball team, that really changed the perspective of a lot of people seeing right. that you know he can relate to some of the 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 bet the best players in the world that they looked up to like okay oh, coach k kind of cool right. and then we get guys like yourself cam mm -hmm. you know Z we started getting some of those really really high high caliber guys and they was you guys have been successful you know the marvin bagley's you know and Kyrie right. and you know all, all you guys you guys yeah. all you guys have been instrumental in that changeover of duke becoming not only one of the better school but you know people are actually like all right man like yeah i can I can get like, yeah, I can get down with Duke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Yeah, I feel you on that. Because it's it's been a lot of it's been a lot of false stereotypes uh over the you know over the years about yeah. you know about guys that go to Duke. So uh it's good to see that, man. Um uh, we have some bandwagon of fans now. It's 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 cool. It's 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 cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, cool. cool. it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but nah, Trey, I'm not gonna keep you, man. I I appreciate it, bro. I really do appreciate it, man. All the best to you in, in, in the draft and and everything you got going forward with your with your career, uh, stay safe, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All good. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. All right, bro. All right.